All right, Gibraltar. One of my favorite maps to play. Definitely a frustrating game, though. Obviously, this is console. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best to give it the best review that I can, but we'll see. But I'm definitely going to give you guys the best quality that I can. All right, this starting position is not my favorite. It kind of looks like everybody on your team is kind of all over the place. If you start here like this, kind of, a, if you haven't noticed, so when you watch like the high level games or even remotely um, games where people are trying to do what they want to do, you need to go to like, I'd say up here. And you stay up here, not because this is a bad spot, but it's because like, you're not really doing much. Like, like, like real talk, like you're not really doing anything. You're just kind of standing there. And I do this sometimes where I just kind of stand somewhere and I do nothing. Even if you're like, if you're here and nothing's happening, why not just go here? It's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. You're just closer. You're literally closer. You have more. You have more uh, possibilities to to protect your teammates. But from this point of view, like you really can't do anything. Like look at it. now, you drop down, you get closer, but like now you're gonna have to use your flight up or out. Ryan's purple, right? Flying into Ryan now, and Ryan is not one anymore. He's getting healed. So. Um, yeah, yeah, so <laughs> right away we can already learn from that one. Um, there's just, just don't start there. You could have done the exact same thing with the Reinhardt from above without taking any damage, without doing anything. Like, yeah, you might say terrible or people might make fun of you for that play. And, you know, it is what it is at that point, right? Like, that's the point of art reviews is you're going to have plays that are a little bit not the best. But overall, in my opinion, if you start up top, you're doing the same thing without doing that damage. How often have you guys seen me on stream stand above people from high ground when they're playing Reinhardt and just shoot from above them and do 60-70% damage to Reinhardt's and then I can go for the kill, fly into them, and fly right back up? Because if you can develop good flight control, what you can do is get a Reinhardt really low, fly down into him, and then fly back up all in the same motion. So, um, I think that's a little bit better. So, yeah. Um, and if I don't say hi to you guys in the chat, obviously I'm just doing the VOD review. No, I love you guys, and I will do my best to keep up in track with you guys. It's just I got to catch up on a lot of these because I do owe a lot of VOD reviews to people from my Discord. Um, which you can submit my VODs on my Discord. I'm sure Noctu puts it in the description below. Anyway, so now it's about it's about setting up your retake, right? If you look at the kill feed and what's something you want to start paying attention to is you lost multiple teammates here. So trying to get forward and aggressive on them probably isn't the best play. Like if you look right now, like I guess your soldier got a kill, but your Anna and soldier are below you now, and they're pushing the cart, right? So what's gonna happen is you guys are gonna get split off here, and because there's no communication right now about any of that, I guess maybe because you're on console, you might not be able to hear the, the voice chat. But because like there's no not like major like stuff going on there, like you guys end up just doing some weird like rotates here, and like now I guess now you're in a good spot. Now once again, good job on going for the Zarya here, and I like that. But you could have done the same thing again from high ground and done the same exact effort without using as many cooldowns. And in my opinion, I would have gone for that. But that's just of course my opinion. Um, once again, you seem to be playing. And don't take offense to this. You're playing D.Va right now like you're Zarya. Play D.Va like you're D.Va and play Zarya like you're Zarya. You want to get aggressive here now, by the way. You have this cooldown. Use your DM when you go in. You should not be afraid to go in there initially. You're going to do enough damage to him. Use your rockets effectively. When you're nanoed, as long as you use your DM correctly, you can overextend just a little bit. If they do have a Zen Orb on you, I do like the, the, you being a little bit passive there. At the same time, the the, the Hanzo was low, and obviously you, can, you should be able to aim and kill him. But once again, you're playing D.Va like Zarya. Yeah, I know, I wish it wasn't the offseason either. You're playing D.Va like Zarya, and you don't want to do that. I just I just don't like seeing that, because I used to make this mistake on Zarya where I'd play like D.Va, and I'd play D.Va like Zarya. You want to play D.Va like D.Va. Abuse the high grounds, and do your best... Excuse me, by the way. Do your best not to put yourself on the ground against them, because you're basically... All you're doing is giving them free range. Like, they can't do anything against you when you're above them. Like, that's just my opinion. Like, once again, you're fighting the Reinhardt 1v1 on the ground. Now, listen, you're doing damage and you're, you're being, like, what, somewhat effective, but at the same time, you have people like Soldier and Hanzo who are all over the place killing your teammates, and you can do the same thing from the high ground. All right, guys. So, they got this. yeah, that's my opinion. And no, I didn't finish God's Basement, no. Oh. We're going to do that tonight. Anyway, um, that's my opinion. I just want to see you please try to play the high ground more. I think if you do that, you'll find yourself being way more effective, and overall, you'll just become a better player. In, in my, in, of course, in my opinion. So, anyway, stay high ground here for a little bit. Uh, they do have a Reinhardt. I swear if you drop down on the ground right now and fight that Reinhardt, I'm going to tell on you. I will tell on you. And you don't want me to do that. But right now, see what you're doing? You're, you're, you're at a good range now. You don't need to drop down. You're doing damage to the Reinhardt. You're being, you're, you're safe. You don't have to lose your mech. And now you're down on the ground with the Reinhardt. And now Azaria is able to farm you. You're shooting shields from the ground. You could have flown up by now. You have the cooldown to fly up. You're still shooting Rhine. And you're going, you're going to go, well, you know what? I got the kill on Ryan, Nemo. 
I got the kill on Ryan. Got the kill on him. Could have done the exact same thing from a high ground position. You're fighting his on the on the ground low. I mean, uh, with the full, full energy below, and you're giving yourself no opportunity to be able to use your cooldowns effectively, right? So, I, and, and yeah, people are gonna go, "Wow, I play Diva like this." And truthfully, this is one of the major problems you run at, you run in with Diva, is you don't use, like, you just don't use your abilities or your your kit the correct way. You just play it like a generic ABC type of style. And what you'll start to learn. What you'll start to learn is that if you play more of a high ground based diva that uses the mobility, you'll do better overall. And you can do some of the same damage output. Yeah, you know what? Maybe you might have done 10% less damage to that Reinhardt from above high ground, but I guarantee you, long term, it's way better than just being on the ground there the whole time. And there will be times on my stream where I'd make this mistake. And I promise you I make this mistake. Anyway, so yeah, stop stop playing uh, like like a ground diva. Because what happens is, is exactly what happened there. You're on the ground, you gotta kill on Reinhardt, but they they de mech you, they got a free grab off. Now even if you win this fight, not only did your teammates have to use their ultimates to try to keep you guys alive, this could have been prevented by just playing high ground. You see what I'm saying? Like you basically just gave up so much position and then map control to kill a Reinhardt and be on the ground. Now we have a soldier high ground, right? Your DM usage has been okay. You're not overusing it because it's hard to use it against this comp anyway. But now once again, you're you're doing it. You're you're, you're taking you're, you're taking these ground battles. And once again, I understand the cards there, but you can you can save yourself time. You can pay attention to the meters. There's so much you can do, and you're, you're just opting to like take fights on the ground. And once you learn how to fight from above as D.Va, you're gonna truly realize how much easier D.Va is. D.Va's about mobility and the ability to use your just your cooldowns like efficiently, right? That's what it's about. You have so much to your kit. If you're using one, even one of like part of your kit incorrectly is diva you're going to be significantly worse than you can be for example if you're trash garbage excuse me we are sophisticated here if you're garbage at defense matrix management you will always be way less like uh not as good on diva than you could be if you're bad at mobility your your flight control you're going to be worse than you could be so diva is one of those heroes in my opinion of course diva is one of those heroes that if you can understand the kit correctly and play around that kit and around that mobility, you will be 10 times better D.Va than you are right now. And if you screw up even one, even one of those types of parts of D.Va, you will find yourself struggling and figuring out what, what, what can I do? Like, what, what am I able to do? So, anyway, back on the ground again. No, obviously no alt there, you paid attention. I'm, I'm positive side of things, I'm super happy you didn't alt there. You recognized it wasn't worth it. Now we're going to third point. Now this is where D.Va, D.Va has a little bit of strength there. You're running the Rissa, Rissa D.Va, which is okay. I'm not gonna say Arista Diva is good on Gibraltar, but I'm never gonna look at comps a lot of the time because unfortunately you're gonna get shit show comps all the time. And there's nothing I can do about that. Now you're staying behind the shield. Now I'm okay with you being on the ground here because you're using the Arista shield. The last time you had the Arista, you were in front of the shield and you were playing way too aggressive with it. So it's okay to be on the ground when you're playing Arista Diva. And then when they get aggressive, you can use your flight to get out and then be on that high ground again, all right? So anyway, let's watch what happens here. You have a soldier to your left. You need to start looking at him a little bit. I would start falling back just a little bit now and start paying attention to where the Reinhardt is. So I'm gonna talk about this next Diva that you could do, and I'm gonna show you one of the best ways. Okay, here, we're already, I'm already seeing it. So what's happening now, and it's gonna be a little bit blurry, but I wanna talk about something I haven't been bringing up in my videos recently, and I wanna talk about it now. It's called Areas of Opportunity. Right away, if I'm playing D.Va, and you have seen me get multi-kills on D.Va all the time with this, when a Reinhardt is massively out of position, and their teammates are not behind that Reinhardt, there's a good chance that you can literally use your D.Va ultimate to get three to four kills if they're over here, and we see that they're over here, right? You see this, you, you, see, what I'm, you see what I'm saying? Do you see this area right here? Look where the Ryan is. If you, if, if you just even just launch this Diva ult up in the air, maybe like half a second, right up into the air, it will land about here, and it will kill anybody in this area. This guy will not be able to get there in time. I would even try to aim it a little bit here, because there's nothing you can do. But anyway, let's see what happens. Yep, on the ground now. Once again, once we saw the Reinhardt get aggressive, I would do that now, you might go for a, nope. You're using your flight to get into them. You're using your flight to get into them. I don't understand it. You're like basically trying to. This game has not gone my way. You're you're trying to use your flight. And uh, by the way, I want I want to pause this for a second. Okay. Good night, All right. Fine. So I mean, biggest critique we're gonna take for that half is straight up, use your mobility. You just you wait. You're spending way, way too much time on the ground, and you're just you're basically like I said. You're basically saying, hey, I'm I'm I'm. Divaria. You're playing basically like a Diva Zarya hybrid when you want to play Diva. And I would like to see a little bit better time on hopefully D. Hopefully on attack you realize that. And on attack, 
mobility is really key if they play a Reinhardt comp. You can actually abuse their team with the high ground as, as an attack diva. So I'm curious to see how you react or adjust or if you do adjust at all. But the good news is, so yeah. So Old Man Fender, you said you're up 300 SR? Since the Vaudreview? That's really good if that's the case. Hmm. Congrats, and I know somebody else is up like 500 SR up at the Vaudreview, that's awesome. Congrats on the progress. Like I said, definitely really good. You climbed about 500 from watching VODs, not having, not from having a VOD. That's it. That's either way. That's good. It's right. so like dive Arya. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see a little bit better job there. Um, I'm gonna skip through this little like stuff because nobody's already talking or making any plays. Um, okay, here we go. So I'm gonna watch you come out here now. Looks like you're just kind of playing behind. Eat the orb. Thank you so much. Good job eating there. I'm very, very happy to see you eat a mortar orb and a fire strike right away. This soldier's out of position, I would definitely try to aggress on him. It should be kind of a free kill. Yep, your teammates cleaned up on it. Nice job. Now we're back to square one now. Take high ground, fly. Just do it. Trust me on this one. We're gonna go for this Reinhardt eventually. I want you to fly above him, start pressuring him down. You can then drop down and your cooldown will be back up again. Simple plays like this will get you in good practice. Fighting the Rhine shield from above or like right now is not worth it. Go up for half a second. Even if you do 20 damage to him for one second, you now take high ground control and then you can drop down anyway and do the same thing. I just want to get you in good practice of taking high ground control when the opportunity is there and not just kind of sitting there like that. Now you go, Emung, I watch you stream and you stand on the card all the time. Well, yeah, that's because you guys are spam and twist my stem and I need to read it at the chat. So sometimes, yes, I do have a little bit of bad habit. Um, I do a little bit of a bad habit um, with some of that stuff, but for overall, you know, I, I, I do my best to actually use my ability a lot. And thank you for the people with the kind words. Huge fan of the entertainment. Thank you, uh, Trev. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, let's keep it on. So anyway, we're, we're on the ground now. Now, you know, I mean, like I said, you're going to end up here anyway, in my opinion, when you do go high ground, but I just want to see you get in the habit of taking the high ground for a second and giving yourself opportunity. Now, obviously, you get the kills here. In my opinion, you're going to get those kills either way, so developing good habits now is going to be way better long term. So I want to see you take more opportunity when the opportunity is there to take that high ground and just be good with it, okay? So it um, looks like we're just going to be kind of holding on the ground here. Once again, you can go for the high ground if you want to. I don't necessarily mind you on cart now. You're going to do Emung. I hate you. You're such a hypocrite. Or not a hypocrite. Like, you're contradicting yourself. What, well, they have three down, a bunch of people going there. Nobody's on the high ground, and, they need, and he's like the third on the cart. Him being third on the cart gets it in there faster, obviously, so I don't mind him being on the cart. That's my opinion, of course. Now we start to go for the high ground control again. This is, to your left, you see a soldier. You should have probably went for the soldier just in a second, but obviously he's running away and you'll be able to get a free kill on him. One thing that you're doing, by the way, and I'm going to start talking about this now, is you're using your flight without any uh, momentum and, and build. So instead of like flying at angles and giving yourself opportunity to kind of use momentum forward, you're flying in a straight line at the ground. You're like, you're like a hoverboard. You're not, you're not being like, a, like a, something that flies in the air. Like you're being a hoverboard. You're straight up just being a hoverboard. That's all you're doing. You're just straight up flying straight at the same angle, giving yourself no opportunity to use the float technique or go anywhere with it. You're just playing super chill and like, I just, I wanna see more, give yourself a little bit more of an arc, if that makes any sense. Thanks, uh, nude Nate, I appreciate that. All right. Ultra weak. The power of the okay, good job so far. Thanks for the heals. I would hopefully go for high ground now. You know what, Genji's behind on your widow, so you do need to pay, atten pay, pay attention. Right, pay attention to that a little bit. Um, but once again, we're playing the same ground game, and I'm already seeing the same mistakes. And this is gonna be this is an easy fix because I think once you understand that you're making this mistake, you will start to play this hero like it's meant to be played, which is totally fine. And I'm glad that you submitted this because this is what I like to see. I like to see this type of struggle because, or this type of play style because it's something that is easily fixable. I do want to hear you call out Zarya no personal, even if your teammates did call it. Again, the habit of good calls. I wouldn't out there. Good job on Alton, so I want to say really good job on Alton there. Now we're going to go in slow motion, apparently, so I'm really excited about this slow motion gameplay because for some reason it's starting to slow down, and I'm not sure why it's slowing down, but now it's starting to pick up again. Looks like you're just kind of going to die here. I would have recommended you run forward to them a little bit more and more to length they weren't going to stagger you. Um, one of the best things you can do is either A, get to about 80% and then run away and bait them to you, or just run in the straight line and die. You don't want to reset yourself. Okay. Good call. There we go, baby. I've regrouped call. I love it. I love it. Where, though? Where are we regrouping? We're all up. We're all up. Yeah, but where's everybody? Who's missing? We're all up. But who's missing? All right. All right. We need one more. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. We need one more. All righty. Well, whoever's behind you, unlucky for him. 
Uh, any chance of some Diva Flight Control attacking Fragus? You can do that yourself in, in there for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Um, interesting job going for the high ground. I don't mind you trying to like fight that, but I still think that if you look at your team comp, it's going to be hard to take on that 1v3. I do like you taking the high ground and going for it, but I think you can go forward against them and try to angle yourself the other way. My opinion, I wouldn't get back in your suit. You're going to die either way. On to the next fight. Now we're going to regroup. And we're going to look at what we have. There we go. He's going to try to escape now. Hoping he escapes. Nope. Okay. Regroup. Regroup. We're down a soldier. Regroup. 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 I like that. I, I kind of like this. I kind of like that. That was the reason why I like that diva bomb too is because you could tell there was people out of position, and you gave it like a pretty good like nice range. I like that. That was a good diva bomb. That was smart. I liked your reaction. The let's go. I like how your teammate instantly left the game right after that happened, but it was even better. Um, and now you're really gonna lose that fight. It's pretty unlucky. Pretty unlucky time. But you know what? That was a good ultimate. I can give you that. I like that. I like that. All right. Let's see what else we have coming up here now. Check out one thing here. Good. Do, 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 do. You were so mad your teammate was gone. I bet. I bet you were. I like the diva bomb though. It was, it was. It was well placed, and you saw opportunity. See, an opportunity making decisive, quick decisions as diva is what's going to make you a great diva. Being indecisive, making like you, you, even if you make a, um, a decisive bad decision. It's I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's better than making an indecisive, half like decent decision, because the, the, by the time you make the decision, it's like already you lost your area of opportunity. Remember to melee there too when you're like shooting him. You can probably get a kill in the melee. Melee him, melee him. Good job. Now he's gonna be healed up through that, so you're kind of screwed. Oh yeah, he's weak. Oh my god, he's you just can't. You, there you go. Push through. Nice. Got lucky. You got back in your suit, but I would have done the exact same thing and probably lost my suit. I would fall back now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good fallback. Good fallback. There we go. Um, I didn't recognize he had grab at this point. I'm not even like, you know what's gonna, gonna sound really weird? <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird. But I'm not really like worried about your ability to track ultimates right now because I feel like everything, like a lot of the, what's going on right now is more, like it's more about like your, you not playing D.Va like D.Va. I, 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 want, I want to get into like you understanding how to track ultimates and understand when an ult's coming and forcing out grabs. But I feel like right now, if even if you ate grabs every time, the reason why he has grabs so much is because you're standing there giving him a free grab. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Am I, or am I wrong? I feel like most of what's happening is that. So, let's work on that part. There we go, good kill on the soldier. Oh, that was a weird ultimate by him, so that was an interesting decision. Right now, if I'm you, I'd ult pass, because we started to already use the personal bubble. Yep, there we go. That should get, yeah, there we go, see. Kill. Let's do it. And the reason, well, first of all, ooh, look at that, passion. The reason why he got kills there was because the Reinhardt was out of position, the Zarya used personal bubble. So the moment the Zarya used personal bubble, it was a guaranteed kill on the Zarya for being out of position. The Reinhardt had no ability to protect him there, so he was close holding the shield. That was a very well-placed debuff. That was area of opportunity that you saw that we just talked about earlier. We just talked about that same scenario. You noticed it, and you got, you got a 3K. Um, hopefully your teammate leaves now, and then it goes to waste. Right, Why is the stream so laggy? It's not really the stream. It's more of him having like a little bit of lag going. I don't, I don't see much lag happening, though. And I have zero drop frames. But either way, that was um good diva bomb. Sorry, no personal, top left. Yes! He said no bubble, let's go! Let's go, baby, I, I love it. I love it. So, um, good job there. You got you got, you were able to take the second point, obviously with a little bit of time. Now I want, I want to talk about this because this is something that people forget about. Never panic in these situations when they have three minutes left on the clock and you run out of time, but you still cap it. On a map like King's Row, like when you cap the, you need to cap the first point. What happens is, is that if you if they finish with a minute or above, a minute or above, 
If you cap with no time, you will not have the opportunity. You will have zero opportunity to cap. You will play defense only, and they need a cap first point to win. On a map like Gibraltar, Dorado, where it's just pushing the payload the whole time, you can finish with no time, and they can finish with five minutes for all that matters, and you still have opportunity to win. So when you get in this scenario, make sure people do not panic. All you need to do is finish with zero time. Now, now we're going to continue to the next part of why it's still very possible to win when they have a lot of time and you don't, and it's because of overtime spawns. You go, Iman, what are you talking about? I don't even, what does that even mean? So overtime spawns are increased spawn rates, which means that your spawn timers are significantly longer than when you play a normal timer. So for example, if you have one minute and they have four minutes and you cap first point in overtime, they now have overtime spawns, which means that now if you win the second fight, they can't handle second point at that point, which means you get pretty much a guaranteed third point, right? Now, if they have four minutes, okay, and they don't have that spawn, that opportunity to have overtime spawns for a while, it means that even if you lose fights, you get more fights to take. Right, so if you get destroyed on second point, you know uh, Gibraltar, like right, like at the at the corner, you can probably come back and retake it and delay more time, right? But if you lose that same fight when you're when it's an overtime, there's a chance that retakes a lot more difficult and it's a lot more sporadic. So when that overtime situation happens, when that overtime situation happens. You can still win with just a minute time. In fact, some of my biggest wins and easy wins I get are overtime games where I actually have less time, but I get the overtime spawns before them. And all we do, all we do is pay attention to alts. At that point, if you use your alts correctly, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself first and second point. You're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a first and second point. So um, I remember why, I remember, it, 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 I'm not going to say it used to make me annoyed, but I remember when Overwatch League was out, there was casters going, I can't believe that they did it with like a minute left. I don't know how they did that. And I'm like, dude, look at the fights. Go compare the fights and how many fights they took. Like, I'm surprised they didn't understand that because they, they weren't bringing up the fact that overtime spawns and the fact that there was less time per point was like, it was actually kind of frustrating. I was actually frustrated that because I was like, well, that's kind of, if you look at what's happening is they don't have the same opportunity that the other team has. Like they aren't explaining what overtime spawns are, right? Overtime spawns, overtime spawns have been in the game for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. And it happened consistently in Junkertown. Teams were winning with like, they'd have one minute and the other team would have three minutes. And they were like, oh, I can't believe it. What the hell? It's like, well, because they didn't have the same type of retakes. That three second increase that you have is insane. Like you literally don't realize how much of a difference three seconds makes. Because this is what happens, by the way. If six people die at the same time, okay, yeah, I can understand you get a little bit of a retake. The problem is when you get staggers, and a lot of the time in those fights, it's staggered fights. So you're, you're not, you're responding on longer spawns, and you're waiting long, you're also waiting on their longer spawns on your teammates while they get all the map control, they get more opportunity to take space, they have more opportunity for their teammates to come back, like there's a lot of opportunity there, right? So I was very surprised not to hear that, but so remember that, when you're in a situation like this where there's 254 on the clock, and you finish in overtime, I'm pretty sure they get some extra time too, if you do finish, you can still win this game, and you can win it easier. So, anyway, yeah, so here's the thing. The increased spawn times begin for both teams as soon as overtime begins. Exactly. The problem is, is that it will kind of favor the attacker a little bit as long as you don't lose, like, your Ana and, like, your Zenyatta, like, all the way towards the end of a point and they are able to retake. Do you get what I'm saying? Did you understand what I'm saying? Right? So yes, while both teams get those overtime spawns, as attackers for the most part, once you win the first fight, more than likely you'll be able to get back to a certain scenario, uh, situation where their retake's more difficult. It just, look, just look at it. Historically, like that, not historically, I made that up completely. Teams in general, I love this guy, one guy who's like said four times in the chat, I love my girlfriend. You know what, can we get a pog in the chat for I really like to play for letting him know that you love it? You know, that's awesome, dude. I actually like that, dude. Being passionate about your girlfriend is awesome, dude. Let's get a pog in the chat for I really like to play. Pog. That's what I'm saying. Yes. See, he said he said five times in the chat that he loves his girlfriend with no no context. There we go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Anyway, so enough of that. Hope you guys learned a little bit of a lesson on how overtime spawns can work and how they can be different for the retakes. Like I said, I know it's like only like a few seconds, but those few seconds are like you gotta measure, imagine how much space can happen in that, and like that's why usually you feel like you come back from games where you're down in maps like this. Once again. Quick summary, maps like King's Row, where you have to capture point. If you have a minute or above and they have no time left, 
you will you'll be able to attack. They they can only defend because there's no time available. Mass like Hollywood Kings Row, Dorado, Gibraltar, the exact opposite, and you have way more opportunity. Junker Town, etc. Blah, blah blah. You get the whole point. Nambani is like on the Kings Row side of things. So <laughs> anyway, hope you guys learned a lot about that. <laughs> um. So I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit about how the map control and all that stuff works. And like, um, I hope that people are able to take that and knock to you. You can put that rant in there if you want to. Um, so yeah, anyway, hope we're learning. <laughs> so let's continue on here. So they do have a Sombra now. Um, now, am I, am, I, am I wrong here? Did I see his translocator right there? I'm in a weird spot here. I'm in a weird spot here. Do I kill his translocator? Or do I try to find the Sombra and then make him translocate there? Because either or it seems like an okay play. <laughs> but I feel like if you do see the Sombra, you could pressure the Sombra and then kill her right here. Cause that's, there's, or you can kill her and then she has no escape if you see her. Sorry. And you saw where it came from too with the throw. So. Yeah. So excuse me, this is um gold. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Anyway, I right, just okay. So obviously the translator's sitting there. Once again, we're doing the same thing. You're, you're doing this thing, by the way, too, where and this is why I want you to learn the arc, is you're flying straight at them, you're like, well, I'm gonna get you baited. I've seen you do it like 20 times. You're going, I'm coming you baited. And you like stop yourself and then you stop literally right where you are, and then you give them advantage. You give them advantage. Like, I, I, literally, you're, you're gonna do it again in a second. Jermaineed! Okay, I went too far, my bad. It looks like the, 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 the Brigitte killed that Sabra. So anyway, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. All right, got a kill on the Winston. We're gonna, we're gonna come, oh nice, big kills. You have an advantage now, just keep going a little bit forward here. Take the high ground above you so you don't get uh, hacked by the Sombra easily. Uh, no because you're fine. <laughs> Good call on the Zarya no personal, by the way. Really glad to see that. Nice fly in here now, you're gonna get the kill. But I do wanna see you go for the high ground. You can do the same thing from high ground. You can learn the spread a little bit from there and you're gonna do you know a little bit less damage, but more than likely the same result's gonna happen. Once again, take bridge control for a second. Give yourself time to heal up, get cooldowns. You're fighting on the ground and they're just shooting your suit. So we've learned so much about this for you, and I'm really glad to see that. Soldier's obviously Elton, you're not in suit now. Ryan's dead, he has no shatter. Sombra's hacking from behind. I want to get back in this car right now, you're in your EMP. I would be taking my shirt off right now at this point, because there's no nothing else I can really do that's effective. Shoot things as Baby Diva, but guess what? You try to get back in your suit. Oh, big kill, big Baby Diva kill. Zarya are in front of you, call no personal now, please. So your teammates know that's an easy target. We didn't make the call. Your teammates won't know that they don't have the personal bubble. We do have a big grab coming here to McMuffin919. I'm not sure what the 919 means, but probably how long he's in the bathroom after McMuffin. And it looks like you're gonna lose the game. So. So, 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 so. I will say this. We learned some stuff. We got some positives, we got some negatives. Let's talk about the positives. You seem to have a decent aim. Obviously it is console, so I'm not quite sure how I'm not quite sure how the auto aim works and if aim is a big difference on console, but your aim was, your aim was good. Um, Diva bombs were well placed. The both times that you used your Diva bomb, because I felt they were effective, I felt like you saw the same thing that I saw and you made a good play. Keep paying attention to out of position Reinhardt's, but now we're gonna go to the negatives and this is the big part. Stop playing Diva like a ground Diva. You have mobility. There are times where you can play in the ground. Arisa Diva is really good for that, but then you have the ability to go, nope, and get the hell out. You can, just, you can just get the hell out of there, all right? Um, you're, um, I do want to go back to a positive. Your defense matrix management was pretty good. I felt like you actually didn't use DM much. I feel like most of the time you didn't use DM much because you were fighting Zarya's on the ground. So we're going to go back to this. Um, so the negatives were, like I said, you're, you're, just, you're, you're playing DM on the ground. You're not using your mobility. Um, sometimes you choose to communicate cooldown. Sometimes you don't. You're not giving yourself opportunity. You're not able to track ultimates. All these things are things you can work on. You can get really, you can get uh, insanely better with. Um, feel more confident in your diva bombs. Use, learn how to be better with your flight mobility. I would greatly appreciate if you could learn that. Remember, we want to go at arcs, not at straight lines or baits, right? You want to go at arcs. Once you learn how to go arcs, you can use momentum. You're going to have abilities to like nope the hell out of there. So for example, if you fly in, if you fly in. 
like this, and you're like, wee, and then you go, shit, no. But if you go, shit, right? You don't want to go, you want to go, wee, and then back. But you're going, eh, like, it just, you're not giving yourself opportunity to give yourself an escape. You have enough time in the air and you can use the float technique to get yourself out. So I just want to see you learn how to use that arc a little bit more and give yourself better opportunity. Because you do arc your bombs, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's what I, I want to see you do better at. Uh, you know, I did talk about tracking ultimates, but you don't have to make that a priority. Right now, I want you to play D.Va like D.Va, and I think you'll do better automatically. And I actually believe that if you play D.Va like D.Va, and you play more of a poke, be annoying, all while being near your team style up above, you will climb. And I guarantee that. And then after that, we can talk about tracking ultimates, being more communicative of what you want to do, and stuff like that. But for now, as of now, I want to see you work on what I just said because I think you will get better if you do that. Whether or not you're playing on a console, a Wii controller, uh, you, you know, you, your your giggles and you play paladins. Like, there's so much stuff that you can do to get better. I just want to see you take what I said today, and I guarantee you, you will climb. I guarantee it because there isn't stuff here I see where I feel like you're just like not able to aim or do anything. I feel like it's all about the fact that you're playing diva like that.